to the scientist. He does not remember anything worse than I thought, but I don't remember calling him that. He's not a scientist. He's not a pseudo scientist. He's not a scientist, period. But never mind that. What is that way to do the liar on? Because he does this and he does it frequently. He speaks with authority about things that he either does not know or in this case probably deliberately misrepresents. And that's the notion that bacteria that are resistant to uh, uh, antibiotics have invariably lost information. There's surely a case or two where they have, but we know there are many where they have not. They trade the information between themselves. You don't trade lack of information very easily between yourself. It's an unusual characteristic of bacteria that they're capable of doing it. And there are special mechanisms that I won't bore you with that permit this. It is simply not true that this is a loss of information. If I give you a little fly as an example of that visual mutation, he turns around and says, what is it in this speech? That wasn't the point. The point was there are such a thing as beneficial mutations, and when he claims otherwise, he is, to put it gently, misrepresenting reality. Now, let me ask you a few questions. I hope you can just get short answers on this. Um, is Noah's Ark a fantasy for adults? I believe Noah's Ark story is literally true. I think uh, it's logical to think that one person and his family could put two of each kind and seven of some kinds onto a boat. I think it is much more logical than to think everything came from Iraq 4.6 billion years ago. Yes, I believe the story is literally true. Okay, now, I just want to point out the double game, this uh, person's play. Uh, namely, if I cannot see something with my own eyes, namely an evolutionary change over long periods of time, which by definition you cannot see, then I've left the world of science and I'm in the world of fantasy, right? He believes that something is inherently true. He has not seen it with his own eyes, he cannot see it with his own eyes, he's just happy with it, he thinks it's logically consistent. That ain't science, that is, according to him, a fantasy for adults, period. <laughs> Chickens and dogs right now who fail to answer the 
Christ will shall save you for you, Dr. Hoover. Right after the flood, when these poor creatures had to find the, the world again to live in, and had to increase, 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 how did the flood fall of the United States government? How did it get regenerated so quickly in your version of worldview? Well, you're saying I'm so strong, man. They don't have to inbreed, inbreed, inbreed. The first generation, they marry sisters. After that, they marry cousins. After that, they marry second or third cousins. So it's not a problem. It was Darwin married his first cousin intentionally because even up there until the 1850s, they thought you'd get better children if you married close to the family. So it's been throughout history, there were kings that had to marry royalty. The Habsburg family is an example, but it's required to marry royalty just a few hundred years ago. Sometimes they married their sister. They thought they would get increased you know, you know, gene pool. So, it is not correct that after X number of generations, everything goes bad. But it is, uh, it's also you're saying a straw man to say that they had to inbreed, inbreed, inbreed. First generation, they're marrying sisters. After that, it's cousins, and et cetera. And I think if you don't believe that all humans are related, this would quickly lead to the uh, racist philosophy that races are radically different and evolved somehow differently, and therefore you're headed down the path they don't hit their balls to become, you know, one race is superior. I'll be careful of that one. Okay. Well, again, uh, he's failed. Sometimes 